Hello, everybody. I'm Diana. Welcome into So Uncommon and the Riley Blake Vlog Challenge. It's Riley Blake Day. That's right. It's Thursday. It must be Riley Blake Day. But actually, this week is the last Riley Blake block in the challenge. Next week will be some finishing information. But basically, this is the last block in the challenge. You made it all the way through to block 16. Excuse me just a second. I have bangs in my eyes. Um, so you've made it all the way through to week 16. I'm so impressed. Aren't you impressed with yourself that you made it all the way through? And of course, what makes the Riley Blake Challenge special with us is because we're doing it with the Build-A-Quilt system. We're making our blocks with patchwork in the hoop. You can too, if you never have done this before, stay with me throughout the video. And at the end of this video, I will share with you um, where you can get these Riley Blake block patterns in the Build-A-Quilt system for free, okay? So hang on with me and we'll get to those. So I thought maybe today we would look through, uh, first of all, a little bit of some of the blocks um, from the, um, from the challenge. So this is last week's block. It was called Put a Spin on It, I think. Um, really pretty block. I loved this color mixed in with the green and the gold. I thought that turned out beautiful. This was one of my favorite, Bloom Where You're Planted. I mean, if that's not a flower block, if you want to do a quilt and you want flower blocks, boy, that's the one for you to go to. And then we had some pretty star type blocks. This was one of them really pretty block. Uh, this one was called um, Flip Flopped, I believe. This is the one I thought would look really cute as a quilt done with um, um, Southwestern colors and all. I thought that was pretty for that. This one is one of the ones I loved. This was a unique block for us with the Build-A-Quilt system because this whole square piece here is one section and this whole piece is one section. So except for that square in the middle, we were only making two specific segment pieces. So you didn't have to make all these teeny tiny pieces. Um, and I thought that turned out great. I really loved that one. Here was another one. Now this is one that got me to thinking about the idea that this whole center section could be used as a mini block all on its own. Um, and, and some of these were like that. Were any of these others I've shown you like that? where the center could be used as a block on its own, but that one surely was for sure. And then this one was Dazzle. This had this one had all the colors in it, didn't it? I, I At the beginning, I thought this was too much color because I don't think you can really see the pattern really clearly. It doesn't pop out at you, but I just love all the colors. So in that way, I think it turned out really well. Uh, this was a more recent one. Got little piece of thread on there. This was one called Inside Out. And then this one, we talked about, um, although we had like four specific colors, five specific colors, I chose eight colors. I used the same color, but I used different fabrics and in different versions of those colors. And I think it turned out really well that way. And then this was one of my absolute favorites. This was Amy Smart's Dalesford Block. And this was my version of the Dalesford block. In fact, I'm making a piece, a small uh, wall hanging piece in these fabrics, in these colorways. I just think it turned out beautifully. I really love it. And then we had some more um, too, but I won't go through all of them. But there is one um, that I will show you later because there's something a little special about that. But this week's block is called Point the Way. And once you see it, you can tell. Let me show you. You can see it easier on the Build-A-Quilt pattern uh, cover. Point the way. Lots of flying geese, um, half square triangles, and a diamond and a square. All very specific pointed pieces, right? So this one, now um, we can talk about it in a little more detail, is right here. Here's my finished block. I thought it turned out great. Magenta and pink, gold, white, and one little green center. So this magenta and this magenta, I used the same fabric. Um, and then this was a pink that I had. 
And then this is a Moda Grunge and um, just a white fabric that I had and a green fabric that I had. You'll have to excuse me. It's still allergy season. The fact that I'm even here and that my eyes are open is a miracle, you guys. This whole since Sunday, um, it's been horrible. I went out running Monday morning and by the time I got back, I didn't think I was going to get back on my own. I thought I was going to have to call somebody for help. My eyes got so swollen and shut. By the time I got into the house, I literally could barely keep them open to see. I was throwing water in them, taking Benadryl, all of that. Finally, the swelling went down completely on Wednesday. Um, but the fact that I am I'm not worse is a miracle. So my doctor said, no more running outside until allergy season is over. You've got to go back to the, um, we have a YMCA here that has an indoor track. You've got to go back to running inside. You can't run outside while you've got your allergies. She said, if you had gotten stuck out there and no one could help you, you would have sat out there for hours, probably on your own. And she's probably right. So for me, the allergies have just been really bad for me this year. If they've been that bad for you too, I'm so sorry. I'm My heart goes out to you. Anyway, Excuse the voice because it keeps coming and going. Um, but this is the pattern set. And of course, you get your um, cut sheet. Um, the cut sheet's only one page this time because there's really not much to it. But let's talk about the block. Let's let's bring it in here a little bit. So oops. here here is our point the way block. OK, so this is basically a nine patch of half square triangles. This is three flying geese and three flying geese just rotated so that they point in, they, they both sets point inward. And then one diamond in a square, super simple, right? So when you go to do your layout of this and how I want you to think about it when you put it together, you're gonna get a layout sheet in the pattern pack that's going to show you each section to put together. So I want you to sew your nine half square triangles together. That's a section. Then I want you to do three of your flying geese units. That's a section. Three more flying geese. That's a section. And then another section would be your diamond in a square. So technically you're talking about a four patch at the end, a four patch made of this, 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 and this. And so then when you go to put the whole thing together, so your, your nine patch half square triangles to one of the three sets of flying geese, and then do the other three set of flying geese to your diamond in a square, and then sew those two sections together. And that's how you get this. Now, all of these blocks, if you're new, are 10 by 10 inches. Um, unlike our build a quilt, uh, quilt lab sets and other sets where you get things in multiple sizes, so you can make your blocks in multiple sizes. Um, these are being done by Riley Blake as 10 inch finish blocks. And that's how I made them for build a quilt as well. I didn't make any changes that way. So that is our block this week. Really super simple. Now, would you like to meet the designer? Sure you would. The designer this time is a lady named Jerry Robinson. Um, from what I can see, Jerry Robinson, she's been uh, probably quilting about 25 years or so. Um, probably give or take um, from what I could tell from her bio right in here. Uh, in 2005, she'd already been quilting seven years. So if you go five to 24, add seven, you know, you're somewhere in that 25 to 30 year range, I think. So she's been quilting, you know, a couple of minutes, right? <laughs> and then um, her uh, company is called Planted Seed Designs. I like that. And she tells you all about how that comes about in here. And also um, she likes more traditional, classic feeling fabrics for her quilts. And you can tell that in her fabric designs. Jerry, it seems to me, is someone who creates fabric sets that I call wallpaper sets because these look like those beautiful old sets of wallpaper with the big beautiful roses and stuff and I know that for a lot of people these kinds of fabrics are confusing I think personally they're 
stunningly beautiful. I love this. This black and white one, I, I don't think I've ever had any of Jerry's fabrics, but I think she's already got a set coming out in July called Serenity Blues and one coming out coming this coming January called Precious Petites. I'm going to see if I can't still find some of these others maybe out in the stores because I love this. If anyone has the Serenity one in the black and white, let me know um, because I would buy it from you. I just think it's beautiful fabric. But like I said, these large, what I call wallpaper print designs are confusing for some people and I don't want them to be. Let's take a look up here at Jerry's quilt that her beautiful picture and isn't she lovely? What a lovely smile this lady has. I love it. I always look at somebody's smile. You can always tell if it's like if somebody smiles and it's natural or if it's like, oh, I got to do this and now I got to make this. Her smile just radiates sunshine to me. I love that. And I love her background. It looks like she's in a field. Um, and then this beautiful quilt. But I want you to look at her quilt. I want you to look at this piece right here, this piece right here, and especially this piece here. Now, I know it's hard to see, but this fabric right here to me looks like it's probably from one of these two sets. Yeah, it looks like it's probably from this set here. Look at how big those roses are. But when people go to use what I call those wallpaper prints, they get very confused about how to cut them and use them. And Jerry gives you the perfect example in this beautiful quilt right here. She hasn't paid any attention to those pieces, those prints. She's just cut them. And that's what you need to do when you run into these large wallpaper type prints. The other person who does this kind of a print is my beloved Tula Pink. But you can't, I mean, they're great in terms of if you want to fussy cut something, then you can easily fussy cut something because it's, it's you know, you've got lots of room around it to do it. However, if you don't, if you tend to stay away from these prints because you don't know how to cut them to take advantage pretend like they are solids. They read, they don't read as solid, but the color reads as solid. The color families reads as a solid family of color. And so if you needed something burgundy, I'm just going to take this one, then use this as a burgundy fabric and just cut it because there's enough burgundy in there with these lights in here that are just going to add some shading like in Jerry's piece right here in her quilt. It doesn't matter that that those roses are cut up because she's using these to to be indicative of color, not so much so that you see every little ditzy little piece of the print like you might be able to with this one she's calling precious petites. I bet these, especially these fabrics or this fabric right here, I mean, that really is one of those print that reads a solid. And when you cut it, you get the majority of the print within your um, piece. Same over here in these two right here. But on these large ones, don't worry about them being, um, don't worry about them being large prints, just cut them. So if you love those fabrics, then love them and get them and put them in your beautiful quilts and just cut them up. Don't go, oh, should I move this over so I have more? Eh, eh. Just cut it like you would any other fabric. Please trust me. That's my big tip of the day for you. And I was so glad that we had one of these designers that um, was that way in their fabric creation because that helped me to show you what I meant by that. Just don't worry about it being a um, a print. Just cut the print and, and be done. However, if you're going to make something like a diamond in a square and you want this center fabric to show off one of those roses, then for sure you could fussy cut one or part of a rose into the center and really highlight it that way, right? Okay. Cool. So that's my that's my little trick that I wanted to show you um, with Jerry's uh, stuff. And I also let me bring up a different page for you. Um, let me get rid of this one. 
I always have to stop the screen and redo it. Um, yep, here we go. So here, I believe these are her fabrics. Don't quote me. This is the Riley Blake page showing this. Um, yes, this is Jerry's collection, Brilliance. This is a better way to show you. So this is how the block looks according to the design that they give us, right? But here she has done it in one of her fabric collections. I think it's one of those ones I just showed you. Um, and look where these flowers are. She's just cut that fabric. She hasn't tried to make sure that it's mostly the, the darker color or that anything is nice and even within those little sections. She's just cut it and used it. And she's done that in all of that. So that's a great example of that. But there is the, there's the block in the, um, Riley Blake, um, in the Riley Blake, Batiks, because remember, they're having two uh, uh, fabric varieties, this batik and then their uh, confetti solids. So I wanted to show you that because I, I, I just think a lot of people get confused about those kind of wallpaper prints and, and then tend to shy away from them. Don't. If you love the color and you love the print, just get that fabric, cut it up, put it in a quilt, and you'll love it forever. Trust me, you'll love it forever. All righty. Now, um, I've shown you this week's block. At the end, you'll have a half square triangle video, a flying geese video, and a diamond and a square video. I know all of you that have been with us forever know how to do those, but remember those demos are there to help all the beginners or anybody that has been around for a while that just wants a refresher or needs to go back to something really quickly and doesn't want to have to go and look at a different video. You've got it right at the end of this one. Now, I want to show you the final layout. Let me bring that up. Um, come on. Hmm. Hang on. Okay. And okay, now let me see if I can bring it up. There we go. All righty. Here is the Riley Blake block. This is the block. And here's where it goes. That's the one that went into our last space. So guys, this is the layout. Now they're going to have, um, I've actually now seen the finished quilt. They kind of previewed it a little bit. And there is going to be sashing between these that's going to have little diamond squares. I'll figure out how to create that for you once I get it next week. I don't have that information yet, but I'll try to figure out how to create that if you want to do the sashing. But I'm not going to do the sashing. I think this quilt done this way as a wall quilt, again, I've said this, I know I sound like a broken record, but this is a perfect wall size quilt. If you put it in with the sashing, you're going to probably get a good size throw quilt. Um, but I think it would be lovely just like this. And this is all 16 blocks. Um, there's the Vintage Delight. Um, there's the Dalesford. There's the Flip Flop, Bloom Where You're Planted, Dazzle, um, on and on and on. I can't remember all the names. Garden Patch, I believe. So there are all of the 16 blocks. That's your final layout. And I know that some of you are going to do this layout, but I have been telling you now for a few weeks that I'm not doing this layout, not exactly the same, because I have decided that I am going to use one of those blocks four times in my quilt, and which means I'll be removing three of the blocks. It's not that I don't like all of the blocks. I do. They were all great. I just like a wall quilt. I want my wall quilt to have a little bit of symmetry to it. And so I'm putting one specific block in all four corners. Are you ready? Now I know that a bunch of you think I'm going to do the Dalesford block because I'm going on and on and on about how much I love that block. And I do. And I'm making my other little quilts with the Dalesford in these prints because I do. I love that block. Um, I, 
it is, I think, my favorite of the whole challenge. But there's another one that just speaks to my heart when I think about quilting, when I think about patchwork. You know, this week's designer, Jerry Robinson, talks about in her bio that she likes very classic quilts. I like very classic quilts as well. I love modern quilts. Um, I love art quilts, although I'm rubbish at those. I mean, total rubbish. My husband's cousin, she makes some of the most beautiful portraiture quilts you have ever seen. She's like had them in national museums and on tours and all kinds of stuff. And they're just incredible. I can't do that kind of work. I, I don't quite have that ability. Um, or I think more than that, I don't have that patience. I know I'm not patient, but I love very classic designs. And probably because when my grandmother taught me how to quilt, 50 years ago. Um, that's what she taught me. That's how we quilted. So the one in here that bespeaks to me, that speaks to my heart in that whole classic quilty way is the Vintage Delight. The very first one we did with Lori Holt. I loved this block. Now, I am going to be doing, let me show you my version of the quilt. And if you want to do your own quilt your own way, go for it. I know that Riley Blake would not care. This is my version of the quilt. Do you see here how I put the four um, vintage delights in the corner? And then I just slightly changed these. I've kind of like this one originally, I think, is down here or here. So I've moved these around just a little bit. I've tried to keep them in their original spots if I could, but I just kind of had to reposition them a little bit. But I love this. To me, it gives the quilt a little bit more variation. And my four corners are going to be all in the same fabric. So the fabric I did my sample in will not be the fabric I use here because when I did this sample, I didn't have the Riley Blake colors available to me. So I just grabbed fabric. I'm going to be using more of the Riley Blake colors that you see in the actual pattern um, for my four corners. And um, I love it. I can't wait to get it done. And I'm doing it just this way. I'm not adding any um, sashing and I'm not adding any border fabric. I'm just going to put this together. I'm going to do a very, I think I'm probably going to do a very simple, um, large stippling pattern throughout of it, throughout it, just to hold it together and not keep it, um, um, uh, any distractions away from those beautiful blocks and the beautiful colors. All of my blocks that I'm using, except for that um, vintage delight are going to be the, the samples that I've made. So um, I'll, I've tried to keep my colors when I've run out my fabrics in close family order, at least so that they will work together. And so um, that's what I'm going to do for my layout. So this is the Riley Blake Black Challenge layout my way. And if you would like to do it your way, then you go right ahead and do it your way. If you have um, um, other colors you want to do. If you want to take and rotate around the layout, if you want to, like, I kind of like when you see, um, when you see these four in the center, I was really tempted to move this one out to here and put this one in here and to move this one over and this one in to give more of a four stars in the center kind of a look to this, but I don't think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to leave it be and just change out my four corner pieces. So the ones I've removed are still beautiful blocks. I still love them. I still will use my samples for them, but for my wall hanging quilt, I'm going to use the Vintage Delight in, um, in mine for my quilt. So you can change yours out move things around if you want. If you want to load up your pictures on the Facebook site, So In Common, and chat about it with all of us, please feel free to do so. We can all um, help one another out that way, but that's going to be my layout. 
All right, everybody. So this is the build a quilt pattern set point the way block 16. This pattern set and the pattern sets for all of the blocks in the Riley Blake challenge, as I said, originally are completely free and you can get them at our website, sewincommon.com. Over there, you can also find our um, all of our build a quilt sets. And I, I know I've talked about this in some of the other videos, but we've got about a week and a few days left. Our build a quilt basic set one and our basic set two, these are segment blocks that come in multiple sizes so that you can put them in to make just about any quilt that you want. So the first set is your half square triangle, your square and your quarter square triangle in four sizes. Set two is your flying geese unit, um, split rail and diamond in a square. Those are all in three sizes. Um, and the size of your flying geese unit in here is not the same size as your flying geese is in here, I don't think. I think this one is smaller a little bit. Um, but these two sets are on sale at the website that you see right there, sewincommon.com, through the 31st of May. After, and whatever inventory is there now is all there is. At the end, of May, these sets are going away. They're being rejiggered in a whole new way. Um, and then they will go back out um, later on in the summer, hopefully. And um, anything I add to them will go out to anybody who already owns these sets. But um, these are going away as individual sets. And, they, and they're not coming back when they come back the same way. And these are on a really good sale price. So get them while we have, I'm not adding new inventory in. Whatever I have in inventory is what's there. Um, and that's it. And as of today, the price has gone down just a little bit more because I really want you to take advantage of these. Because remember, in the middle of June, Wednesday Workshop is coming back as Wednesday Workshop Live at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time on Wednesdays, right? Wednesday workshop. And we will be using these things. If you don't have these sets, you can always purchase for what that lesson will be. But trust me, in the end, you want to have these sets so you're not buying all those little separate sets. You want two big sets of basics that you can use for everything. So, um, and so the sale price has gone down just a wee bit more even now through the end of the month. But once they're gone, they're gone. All of that is available over at the website. So you can head on over there um, as soon as you finish watching the video. And folks, I just want to welcome now all of our new subscribers. Do you realize, I think we're, hang on, I just have to look here because my mind doesn't want to, my mind doesn't want to um, accept this number. We're over, oh my gosh, we are 415,500 and some odd plus subscribers now on this channel. Holy mackerel, you guys are incredible. That's all because of you, because you guys, when I ask you, which I'm asking you now, to like and share the videos, you're doing that. And that's why this group has grown. And when I ask you, as I'm asking you now, to click that subscribe button and be part of the Sew in Common family, you're doing that too. Now, I know not all 415,000 of you are taking advantage of everything yet, but more and more, more and more of you are, and it's blowing me away. So you guys, um, if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and click the subscribe button like and share the videos. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for really helping to make the dream of several of my friends come true. Because when I started, I went on a six year journey to learn how to digitize and to figure out just exactly what I wanted Build a Quilt to be. And when I did that, I did that because I had friends that were machine embroiderers who wanted to quilt, but didn't want to do it in the traditional way. They had tried, it was all about to them, 
I hate that quarter inch thing. It makes me crazy. I never get it right. My blocks never turn out right. You don't have that problem with build a quilt because everything gets built into your digital patterns. Um, and so none of those friends, dear friends, would quilt with me. And I was very sad. So I went on a journey to learn how to digitize, learn how to design my, my product, all of that. And then on January 1st of 2023, we launched So In Common and started putting out our individual monthly patterns. And then last summer, we launched our basics. And this group has just grown and grown and grown and grown and grown. And I, it brings me to tears every time I think about how much this, this business of mine, this little business of mine has grown. And it's all because of you guys. And like I said, you guys made, you guys have helped to make the dream of about six or eight women come true because they're all quilters now. They all build a quilt now and um, they're all loving it. So as much as some of you are, and I know some of you are because some of you write to me in my DMs and tell me, thank you so much. I love getting your messages. Remember though, if you always, if you ever have questions, you can leave them in the comments. We love hearing from you guys in the comments because then you get to interact with other folks as well. So please do that as well and subscribe. All right, everybody at the end here, is your how-to videos for your, your individual segment pieces. And I've told you how to put this together, your nine patch, your three, your three, and your diamond in a square. And then Sunday, we're back. Um, you can see part of it up here. I've got the Aurora Runner together. Sunday, we're going to do the finishing of it. So join us Sunday for Quilt Lab for the Aurora Runner finishing video. And until then, as always, have a great rest of your week. I hope that you all have been spared from these horrible, horrible allergies and that you're not stuck in any of these tornadoes and bad weather and that you have a great rest of your week. And always remember, love to you all and go so life beautiful. Okay, so here we are at my machine camera. And the first square that we're block that we're going to create is the half square triangle. Now we're going to go through and make the half square, the quarter square, and the square in the hoop. And then we'll go back over under my other camera and we will talk about how we trim these because you trim all blocks in that manner. So we'll do those all at once. You can see here I have my tools available, my scissors, my glue stick, my stylus if I need it, my seam roller, and my embroidery tape. And right here I have my two fabrics. So I've also loaded my file on my machine. Um, on this particular machine, I loaded it through a USB stick. Um, you might be able to load your files through... Um, uh, the Wi-Fi, if you have a more modern machine that can do that. Um, so somehow you have loaded your file onto your machine and you should know how to complete that. Now today I'm going to be um, stitching in a black thread so that you can see it a little more easily. Um, I have loaded my hoop with a standard wash away stabilizer, one that we would use for, say, making freestanding lace. So now I'm going to go to step one, which is basically going to give me what I call the border outline. And you'll find that information also written in the written instructions, along with the step-by-step um, -step diagrams as well. So it is just stitching out my main border. And because we are doing a square, of course, that border is a square. And what it's showing us is that this finished box is going to be our finished size. Okay. When we trim it out, we'll talk about what else this box represents for us in the piecing process. Now, a half square triangle is always two pieces of fabric. I've chosen this yellow and this polka dot, this aqua with the light yellow polka dot. So I have those prepared. But 
the second step also gets stitched directly to your stabilizer and it will give us the placement outline for our first piece of fabric which is going to be our lighter color or our yellow fabric so let's do that now Now, I will give you one tip here because this was something that um, my shop where I purchased my machines um, and I came across. I have another machine, which is a embroidery only. It's not a combo machine like this one is. And I kept having problems with it not catching stitches on my straight stitch which is basically the only stitch we use when we're piecing. And what we found out was that it actually needed a sewing bobbin case. So in this machine, um, because it's a combo, I have a bobbin case for embroidery and a bobbin case for sewing. The straight stitches do better if you use the sewing bobbin case rather than the embroidery bobbin case, because really all we're doing here is straight stitching like we would on a sewing machine. If you have an embroidery only machine, but that machine has a counterpart, which is a sewing machine or a combo machine, then get that sewing bobbin and check with your local uh, dealer for all of that information if you have problems, that can be helpful. So here I'm going to take and use my glue stick. This will show you how to use that. And I'm just going to place a couple little marks right in my upper square or triangle really, um, where I'm going to place my fabric. Now I can easily see and easily feel that thread line. So I'm going to lay this fabric so that I have hmm, roughly a quarter inch of it hanging over or coming past that line. Not a reason to get really worried about it if it's more because you can always trim it later. Now I place that down. Now I'm ready to stitch out step three, which is going to be the tack down of that triangle. Oops, I'm gonna stop and lift my needle and my foot because my needle came unthreaded. So we'll just re-thread real quick, just a second. Sometimes that happens with machines, right? Thank goodness for auto threaders. <laughs> there we go, now we'll start again. And we're doing the tack down of the top half of the half square triangle. very simple. The half square triangle is probably the most often used block in quilting. And so getting used to making this block um, will be helpful for you because you're going to end up making a lot of them in your quilting journey. In fact, all three of the blocks in our basic set today are probably the three most often used blocks in the series or in a, the quilting series. Alrighty, so now I've tacked that down. If, <coughs> excuse me, this was way over this line, I could remove my hoop and I could take my scissors and I could just give it a little trim. If it's not straight, it doesn't matter. Just do the best you can. Another good reason to have scissors with um, a serrated edge because you're going to get a really fine um, cut there. But as of course I've used my rotary blade with the pinking blade, I'm good to go. And I am not going to trim the outer edges because that gets trimmed when we trim the whole thing out of the stabilizer at the end. So no need to trim here or here at this point. So now the next thing I'm going to do is lay down my second fabric. But I should tell you that with piecing in the hoop, your first piece of fabric is always laid down 
right side up. You also get that information in the written instructions. So if this piece were going to be the print, say that was my first piece, I would lay it down right side up every time, no matter what. Now with a second, third, fourth, or subsequent piece of fabric, you always lay it down right side down or right side together with your other fabric. Now, if you can see here, I've laid this down and you'll see it in the picture diagram in the written instructions where just a tiny bit of my other fabric is showing. I like to make sure and do that. Then I know this is placed exactly where I need it to be for a good um, seam. Now I'm going to place that in here. I'm going to bring my needle down and I'm, or my foot down and I'm going to do the uh, step four, which is going to stitch this together on top of piece number one. All right. Now, piece number five, or step number five, is what we call the flip and stitch. So we're not done, obviously. We have to get this to be like this. So what I like to do there, again, is take my glue stick give myself a little bit right in that square. And I always put my glue right on my, um, right on my stabilizer if possible, because then I know exactly where my boundaries are for that. And I'm not putting it out here anywhere. Now I'm going to take this bottom piece of fabric and I'm going to flip it. So easy. Now it's stuck there because of the glue. Now I can take my seam roller and I can roll my seam and give it a nice little kind of a press there to get it nice and flat. Now, eventually you'll, you're going to iron these as well, but that helps for the stitch out process. Now, step number five is to stitch this on its outer border so that it's stitched down. And we can go ahead and proceed with that. Um, golly, my, sorry, my um, needle came unthreaded again. Again, that's okay. That's what automatic threaders are for to make it easy. There we go. Now we'll just go ahead and stitch out step number five. And sometimes I just keep my fingers there and kind of help it. That's also a good time to kind of use your stylus, so not to get your fingers in there by the needle and the foot. So now technically we've stitched out our half square triangle. Congratulations, you did it if you've been sewing along with me. However, there's one more step. Step six will be a stitch out all the way around the block. And you might ask why? Well, a couple of reasons. One, it's going to connect these pieces that are right here at the corner between the two fabrics, or if I had multiple fabrics, it would connect them all the way around. And that box will also become our guide for trimming and our guide for sewing our squares together. You'll see that more in the trimming part of this video. So now I can, if I like, um, just use a stylus to hold this down here. The thing you're trying to prevent is to have your foot from catching here and flipping this back and causing problems. It's always fixable, but who wants to have to fix it if we don't need to? So you can use a stylus or what I like to do is use my embroidery tape here. I don't put embroidery tape all the way around because it's not needed. I just put it over that point there. And then I know that that's not going to catch. Now you're going to say, oh, well, you're going to put it down there as well. I could, but because my foot is going to go around in a clockwise direction, it's not going to catch here because it's going over that fold. Here it would be coming against the fold. So you can put tape there or not. Let's go ahead and do that stitch out and I'll show you what I mean. So it's going to start up here in the corner. 
and it's going to stitch in a clockwise direction. So I wouldn't want it to catch that. And see, it doesn't because it slides right over it because of the tape. Now, when it comes here, I don't have to worry because it's going with that fabric. It's not going to catch. Now, if it makes you a little nervous, just put a little piece of tape there until you're more confident. That's also fine. So then when we go over to trimming um, in a little bit, I will take this and I will peel this tape off and then we will trim this out of the hoop. But congratulations, you just created your first half square triangle. That's how easy it is to create these squares in any size. This happens to be the four inch finish, but this could have been a two, a three, a four, a five, or any other size that you might happen to have. But in this set, we go up to five inches finished. So we'll talk about trimming in another part of the video. Let's move on to our quarter square triangle. Okay, here we are at my machine. Now I'm using a brother, but you, what, whatever machine you're using, you've loaded your file with your um, either a USB stick or your machine might allow you to do it via Bluetooth or a wire, whatever you use. Let's just talk real quickly about fabric prep. It's really important to prep your fabric um, in advance. So one, it's a more efficient process for you. So here for my flying geese unit, I have my rectangle and I have my two triangles. Now, how did I get these two perfect triangles? You're told in the instructions to cut a square, and then this is one of those times when you're told to subcut. And to subcut these squares, you're going to cut from diagonal point to diagonal point with your ruler on your cutting mat. And when you do that, you get your two triangles and then you have the perfect two pieces. So that's what is meant by subcutting. Now, you can see I keep a little basket with my tools, the ones that we just talked about right here next to my uh, machine. So they're all in one place. They're not rolling around on me. Today, I'm going to be using black thread. Um, so that you can see it. However, my favorite thread is 0184 by Isocord. It's a light dove gray. It's actually called pearl, but it's the perfect color for piecing. It won't show through. You won't get shadows from it. If when you sew them together, you see a little bit of it, it's going to blend in with your fabric. It's not going to be any kind of a problem. But today I'm going to be using black so that you can see it. And I have my um, hoop all set up with my wash away stabilizer. And I am going to link my uh, stabilizer video at the end of this video for you because it's really important to use wash away. Other um, in the hoop type quilting uh, uh, systems will use um, a uh, poly mesh um, and that's okay, but there is a real reason as a quilter we want to use a wash away, and that's all in the video for you. So I will link that at the end of this how-to video. So now I've placed my um, hoop, and I'm going to start with step one, machine step one, and that's what it will say in your instructions. They will call these machine steps. It's stitching out. Now, uh, machine step one and machine step two on your flying geese unit is stitched directly onto your stabilizer. What it is giving you is an outline of the piece and it's giving you a placement line. Step two gives you the placement line for placing your first piece of fabric. So here we go on number two, <clears throat> excuse me. Now, regarding your fabric, I give you really generous cut sizes because we have to make sure to have enough to come over our borderline so that we can trim it at the end. And I don't want you ever, when you flip your fabric, to be in a scenario where you don't have enough for uh, the flip. So I'm going to remove my hoop a little bit right here so you can see it. Now, this is the perfect time for the next step, which is machine step three, 
to place a little of your glue stick right here in that center triangle. And then place your first fabric, just like it says in the instruction, first pieces of fabric are always laid right side up. Now that's plenty of fabric and you'll see that here in a second. Um, like I said, my cut sizes for you are generous um, so that you don't end up, you know, having problems on your edges and you're flipping. So now this is machine step three and it is tacking down our fabric number one. And you'll see that in your instructions. Now, in the instructions, it's going to tell you we need to remove to trim along this edge and along this edge. Don't trim beyond the boundary here because we'll trim that at the end when we trim the whole piece out of the stabilizer. Don't trim above the point of the triangle because, again, that's the outside of your overall piece and you want to be able to trim that later. So let's lay this on a flat surface and let me adjust down my camera. There we go. Now you can see it. I've got my scissors and I'm going to trim roughly a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here. I just eyeball it. I don't mark it. I don't put a ruler down and mark it or anything like that. If you feel more comfortable, you can, but really you're just trying to eyeball that. And I left all of that up at the top over the border. And I'm going to do that again over here. I'm going to leave plenty above for trimming later. And I'm just trimming this right off. There you go. So now I'm going to have enough when I stitch across this later, I'm going to have enough of this up here to trim off and I'll have plenty down here as well. All right, your next part of your instruction says to lay piece number two right side down on piece number one. So second and subsequent pieces always get laid right side down, just like that. Easy, right? Now we'll place this back into the machine and let me bring this back up a little. There we go. And we're going to do machine stitch or machine step number four. And I'll just hold my stabilizer down there a little bit so you can see it. Now the next step is number four, which says to flip fabric B, this is fabric B, into space two and stitch machine step five. I'm going to put a little bit of glue right there in space number two, and now I'm going to flip my fabric. And this is when you can use your seam roller to kind of give that a little press, or you can use your fingers either way. And now machine step number five. And I just kind of, as it's working, sometimes I just kind of like let my fingers guide it a little bit. But please keep your fingers well away from the needle and the mechanism. Now on this one, there's no need to do any trimming at all because all of your excess fabric is outside the outer boundary box and that will be trimmed later. Then we're on to our next step, which is number five in the instructions. And this is piece number three. And again, it's your other triangle. So it's just like we did the last one. We're going to place it right side down, but on the other side this time. There we go. And now we're going to do machine step six. and you're going to get a perfect flying geese unit every time you do this. And flying geese in the more traditional patchwork uh, process can be a little bit complicated. There's measuring and things you have to do with this. It's easy peasy. Now I flipped that, I put a little glue in there, and now we're going to do machine step seven, which is just going to tack it down here on the other side. 
And then I'm just going to kind of just like petting it a little bit to keep it flat. The glue will hold it there though. Okay, so now we are ready for our very last step, which is machine step eight. But I want to talk to you really quickly because this is where you would use tape to tape down where your um, fabric comes together. And that will allow you, let's move our camera down, that will allow you, your foot, not to get caught on the fabric and flip it over and end up causing trouble. So what I do is I take a piece of my embroidery tape, I tape it down, I give that a little rip there, so that's one section. And I have three joining areas on the flying geese unit at the top peak and in the bottom two corners. So I have those taped. Now my foot, when it's going around to do our boundary box, which becomes our guidelines for sewing our segments together, it's not going to get hit. Let me see if it can move our machine a little bit closer. There you go. I think that's a little bit better. I had a little bit far away. Now we're going to stitch down the final machine step, which is machine step eight. And you will have created your first flying geese unit on your embroidery machine. See how simple it was? Um, just so you know, I'm using 700 stitches per minute. And if I were just doing this and not talking, um, my machine says it takes this two minutes to stitch out. So really quick and easy. Okay, now we can remove this. Now you'll want to remove your tape and then you'll take the whole thing out of your hoop and then we're going to trim these and we'll trim all three of our demonstrated segment pieces at one time. So I'm not going to do that here. And now we are ready. We finished our flying geese unit, super simple. And we are ready to move on to our split rail block. Okay, and here is our last demonstration for our last piece, our last segment piece, which is our diamond in a square. It is by far the one with the most steps. There are 12 steps, but again, they're all very simple, very easy. Um, I prepped my fabric, so I was told to cut two squares and then subcut those squares into triangles. I've done that. And I've cut my center square. Now, the one nice thing about the diamond in a square is if I want to create different patterns, I can do three in one color and a fourth in another color, and that can start joining things together and modifying things. There's so much that you can do with this. This is also a really nice block if you're doing a friendship quilt and you want to do a light fabric as the center diamond and then put your name and a date or anything like that in the center. Now, as I said, this has 12 steps to it. There are three full pages of step-by-step -step instructions, and we're going to walk through them right now. And the very first um, step says, stitch out machine step one directly on your stabilizer, just like we did with our other two. And we're going to do that also with step two in this one. We're going to stitch it out on the stabilizer as well because it gives us a placement for our um, diamond fabric, which is our larger square piece here. Okay, there's step one, nice and finished, so we know how big our block is going to be. Now we're going to do a Step two, stitch out directly on the stabilizer. And if you're wondering, I am demonstrating the five inch size today in all three of our segments. However, this is the exact same pattern and you follow the exact same steps, whether you're doing the three inch, the four inch or the five inch. Okay, I have a little bit of a concern with my thread here. I'm going to re-thread. That 
for some reason it's giving me a little bit of a snag. We'll rethread there. And I'm just going to take a quick look. Whenever I rethread the top for something like that, I like to look also at my bobbin thread. And I had just changed my bobbin thread between segments. And so it could be that I had not placed my bobbin in properly. So let's just redo that really quickly just to make sure everything is right. Alrighty, so here is step one and step two. And step three says place a fabric a or it's it's I, I apologize. It this is also part of step two. Place a fabric. No, I'm sorry, I'm reading the wrong instructions. I apologize again. This is step three we're on. Place a fabric a square over space one. That's this space. And stitch machine step three and trim the excess on all four sides, remembering to leave enough fabric beyond the boundary lines at the top and the bottom and the sides. So we'll do that. So I'm going to put a little bit of my glue stick in my center. And I'm going to place, now you can place your fabric if you like on the diamond point like that, or you can place it like that. I think you get a better amount for cutting excess when you place it on the point, just like that. We'll slide this back in and we'll now do step three. There, that looks better. And now we're going to trim this on all four sides, but remembering to leave fabric outside the outer boundary at the points. Okay. So let's go ahead and bring down our camera. And I'm going to start out here and I'm going to trim this edge. And once I get beyond the boundary, I kind of See how I kind of curved off? That's going to make sure I have more than plenty of fabric beyond my point here. And I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to start way out here and then kind of come into my quarter inch. So I'm kind of doing this almost like a half moon when I cut this out, just because I want to make sure that I'm leaving myself plenty of fabric. Because you can see when you cut your second side, you get a little, it gets a little small there. It's going to be plenty with the other fabric over it, but I want to make sure that I'm leaving plenty there. So I start out here and I kind of cut it like a, a half moon shape a little bit. There we go. And you can see that here. It starts out here, comes down and comes back out of it. Now I have one more side to cut. And I'm going to do it the exact same way. Okay, so that leaves me with plenty of fabric, even though it's a little bit, it's going to get covered with this fabric and that's going to leave me plenty for trimming. Now, the next step on goes on to page two and says, step four, place a B fabric number two triangle right side down on top of fabric A as seen in diagram and stitch machine step four and that is going to be right here this is whoops this is um place two okay, I'm gonna put our camera back up there a little bit and place my first piece of fabric so just like that my my fabric b um number two right here it's going to flip up into that number two space just like you see in your diagram And I don't have to do any more trimming on this now until I take it out. It's just that first square that needs a little bit of trimming. Just put a wee bit of fabric glue there. Flip my fabric. 
give it a little bit of a finger press. Now, the next step is to tack number two down, which is exactly what we're going to do. This is step five and machine step five as well. And we are just moving counterclockwise around our diamond. So next is to do the same thing in area three, which is right below area two. So I'm just going to take my next fabric and place it like so. And now machine step six. And all of this is written out and diagrammed for you in the instructions. I'll bring it here so you can see it's in the instructions step by step. But once you've done the first one, you do all the other three corners the exact same way. Now we're at machine step seven. And even though this one has a lot more steps, it still only takes three minutes to stitch it out. Okay. Now we're going to place number four here on this edge. So we're just coming over to the bottom left part of the diamond. And we're going to do machine step eight. Wipe a little glue there. And flip my fabric. And now we're at machine step nine. And that is our tack down for space number four. And we're on page three of the diamond in a square instructions. And we're almost done. We're now to uh, space number five and piece number five. Okay, we're going to place that one just like this. And this is a really good um, this is a really good segment to also show you why we do the boundary box at the end, and we don't use the beginning um, uh, placement box. We'll talk about that a little bit more. When we go to trim these out, we'll hold that for trimming these out. We'll talk about that. Put my glue. I'm going to flip my, uh-oh, look what I did. I placed my fabric in the wrong direction. Bad me. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go back to step number 10. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to take my scissors and snip my thread right here, right where they're connected. And I'm going to snip it off and redo it because I placed my fabric going the wrong direction. I wasn't paying attention because I was talking to you guys. That happens. So remember, after your first piece of fabric, all other pieces of fabric must get placed right side down. So there we go. Now I'm right. And I'll come in here with a little bit of tape. And I'll just pull this excess out. There we go. See, even having to fix that just takes no time at all. Now I'm placing this right side down this time. And I'm back on step 10, which is the tack down. And I'm off to the races, super simple. And yes, even I occasionally make a mistake and I was talking with you all and um, put my fabric down going the wrong direction. But that was a super easy fix. Now I'm going to flip this. And we're going to stitch machine step 11. I think it might be time for me to change my needle. My needle is, do you hear that thunking a little bit when it goes up and down? 
that usually means it's time for a new needle. And I just finished a quilt and forgot to change it today. So probably need to do that now. And this one, I'm going to put tape in all four of my joining areas. To hold that fabric down. And so although your fabric is generous, when you look at it like this, you don't have much excess. You have plenty, but you don't have a lot of extra excess. So there is no wasting of fabric in this scenario. Now we're going to do machine step 12 and we're done with our diamond in a square. How simple was that? I'm a little concerned about that piece right there. There we go. Now, I, instead of using my finger, I could have used a stiletto or something to hold that down um, because you just don't want your finger getting in there and by chance getting stitched. I actually, after 55 plus years of sewing and quilting, I actually stitched my finger just this past year. It was not fun at all. Alrighty, now we have our diamond in a square complete. Okay, now let's go over to uh, my other camera and we're gonna talk about how we trim these out of the stabilizer.